Did you just throw, throw your that? phone? <laughs> no, I did not throw the phone. <laughs> Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Beg Pardon. As always, I'm your host Anthony, joined by Carlos, who is dancing away. How are you? Sir? Who was blindsided. <laughs> How are you? That's what we call a cold open, folks. <laughs> you got a little peek into my uh, pre-show jitters there. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Please change the topic. <laughs> uh, I'm okay. Actually, I'm, I'm pretty good, actually. Yeah. Some uh, irons in the fires, as the kids say. So, nice. Pretty excited to see how that goes. Mm-hmm. Stay we tuned for updates. <clears throat> Who, me or them? Both. Everyone. Everyone. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, we had some pretty, uh, pretty intense flooding here. I was sending you stuff. Yeah, I saw. I thought yeah. it was fake at first. I'm not gonna lie. Just because that one video, like, it looked like a fire hydrant burst. The way the water just kept coming through there. No, Which I assume was the drain. Yeah. But like it was spitting the water back out like it was a faucet. And yeah. I was like, oh, hell. Yeah, beta wasn't playing. And, and it wasn't like any type of like destructive winds or anything like that. It was just too much rain. And like here, it's it can't go anywhere. Like yeah. we get a little bit of rain and this, everything's underwater. Everything. And then I was watching the news, side note, I was watching the news and we talked one i did not know that flood insurance like part of the reconstruction that goes back into building these homes all taxpayers pay for like in the united states i didn't know that me either and then why would you pay so i'm confused like if anyone has the answer to this let me know like am i paying uh am i paying an insurance premium to a fl- like an insurance company like a car insurance that's what i mm-hmm. imagine that being like to car yeah. insurance, to flood insurance, but then the flood insurance company doesn't have to use its own funds to fix it. They use taxpayer money. So where's my money going? Who am I paying? Well, I think, again, I could be a thousand percent wrong. I think what you pay for is your own personal damage, like in the house, like your own thing. Oh, but not the physical what? structure of the home? Correct. The physical structure of the home would be the other insurance like your it's, roof is your insurance but like the foundation and everything that's outside they said like harris county or like houston i think i can't remember if it was harris county or houston is like the most flooded has the mo- most like flooded homes in the united states and to qualify for this list to qualify for this list you had to have your the same structure in the same place flood at least four times so, so, so they're not moving these houses. Over seventy percent of them, they're just rebuilding in the same exact location, and, and then the be- beachfront, and and then being like, "Best of luck." Like, yeah. <laughs> hope you're gonna be hell? fine. Yeah, and like they were interviewing somebody, and she was like, "I thought after Ike, it was gonna be fine." Man, have you been doing this this long? I mean. What can you say? Yeah. Like, I remember when Sandy hit and we were living in New York, everyone was just like, what do we do? Because that was the first Shit time I hit. remember. Shit doesn't happen like that over there on a regular no. basis. Right. Yeah, that was the first time I can remember a storm like that in New York in my lifetime. I'm. It may have happened, but I don't remember it. And I remember people were like, well... I think I have a guy who can fix my roof, but I mean, my insurance doesn't cover that fully. And then there, I know of some people who there was some shady stuff going on with that where they were like, well, he said, you know, he's going to quote me at 10 grand for my roof. It's really only going to cost eight grand and I'll use the two grand on something else. And I was like, I don't know if that works that way. Oh, like insurance fraud. Uh, Yeah. I was like, I'm pretty Mm -hmm. sure that's not how you do that. But that was a common thing that you were hearing around different parts of New York. So, wow. Yeah, All but I mean, it's, it's built into it. They, I mean, insurance companies have to expect people to do that. Correct. Well, yeah, they also like press criminal charges against them too. But the the rate it happens, I mean, people are probably like, you wet your beak, I wet mine. It's like when people they tell you like when you uh, I work at a a retail store or something or even a hotel, and they're like, we let you steal up to X amount because then it's a felony. 
you know, like, so you let me steal like twenty five hundred because three grand's the felony, right? <laughs> like, yeah. Just enough. <laughs> yeah. You're like, um, damn it, he's so close. Oddly enough, we're not talking about flooding today or anything that we had just talked about for the first five minutes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're talking about education, years. education in uh, the United States. Um, specifically, like U.S. history. Yeah. So I had, um, we did a lot growing up. Uh, like I, I have very vivid memories of history class because I think I liked history class. Um, I have very vivid memories of that. And then I took AP history in high school, um, which was very different from like the history I'd learned up to that point. Um, Social studies. Right. Social studies. <laughs> Uh, we did the whole underground railroad thing in Ohio. In o, in Ohio, um, that was weird. It, we did it, but we didn't really go in depth. We did. No, like, did you physically level. go to the thing? Oh um, no. Okay. We like I physically went, went to like a thing. Not a plantation, but like a um, like we had somebody leading us around. Like we're running away. Like. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I think in Ohio there's a few like historical Cause houses. Was, I mean, there, there was yeah. My parents' house, yeah. my parents' house has that little trap door in the um, in their dining room, and then also like a little door that leads underneath the staircase. I didn't know that. That was used for that. Yeah, allegedly used for that. My their house was built in, like the 1840s. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> That's terrifying. Like, just old houses in general. If it was built before 1960, I'm like, I have a weird feeling about that house. Yeah. It can never have, like, central air or anything. Like, the house, it can't sustain the house. And then half the foundation is just on dirt. Because it was before they yeah. had, like, cement. So they, they didn't have... So half the foundation is literally just dirt. And then whenever we were younger, we got caught, like, being in there, like, playing with our trucks. Like, beep, beep, beep. My mom's like, this is the foundation of the home. And we're, like, digging it out of the house. <laughs> Yeah. The whole thing just slides. Right. So, I mean, but yeah, it was you it was used for that. I So, what my what I again, you're young, so you don't know. Mhm. But anything that was like super uncomfortable was like really lightly touched upon. It wasn't as bad as some of those schools that you see in the news like there's some schools where they said like if um if Roger has 28 apple trees full of apples and has eight slaves that pick them equally, how many apples did each slave pick? Like, that's a real thing. I didn't just make that up. That was, like, a real thing, like, in the news. And that was, like, within the last, like, five years. Ooh. Or a lot of schools still do, like, auctions. Like... I've heard of that. Yeah. Like, slave auctions to yeah. to, to show, like what it was like back then. Like, very, very few schools, to the best of my knowledge, they, because how we learned it was slavery was just, like, a piece of, like, the Civil War. Nobody says, like, slavery was, I mean, Massachusetts, uh, I think, was the very first uh, state to even have slaves. Like, there were slaves all throughout the North. George Washington had slaves. Like, people yeah. don't talk about that. Like, there were slaves all over the... This whole country was built on slavery. And yeah. it was such an integral part to, to the development of this country. And I think that people don't like talking about that. They don't like... Um, they feel uncomfortable with it. So then all we hear is like, oh, well, this was like... I don't know. Like, they, they had just these slaves and it was part of the civil war mm -hmm. or I've seen like, um, they had workers brought over from Africa yeah. or, um, like not all this. Like, I mean, it gave them a taste of civilization. They, some, some of the masters were real nice. They didn't even, you know, you, you whipped it. You whipped a child back in the day. That's how they treated their slaves like children. Well, and also too, like you get a sanitized version of that because, like you said, Washington, people were like, "Well, he was he had to be a, a great man. He was the first president. He only let go of one 
out of like a hundred after everything because it was like in his will i guess that his slaves wouldn't be free until his wife died so he only really freed like one out of a hundred and he was ruthless that's where his teeth came from they weren't wooden boys and girls <laughs> right like he was basically pt barning them these teeth pulling them out yeah. like but you don't learn that because everyone's kind of like well he was the first president so we gotta we gotta hero him up a bit right. it's like um it's like for comic book references it's like venom when spider-man he debuted as a villain like eating brains and everything but people loved him so much marvel was like oh crap we gotta make him a hero Let, let's ch let's change him up a bit um well he only eats bad guys brains he only kills bad guys and you're like that's not better <laughs> like what the hell and, and, I, and i think that's the thing and what happens is you have a group of people like what is that thing like to uh uh, the winner gets the right history or the, the victor gets... Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? Whatever that... The winner gets the spoils. Yeah. Um, so, in this society, that is white, Anglo-Saxon, like, males. And yeah. they were able to control the narrative slash still control the narrative of this country. You had... I, I, they didn't even have public schools in the south like you had to you had to send your kids up north if you wanted to to educate them or whenever they finally did come into the south the schools um they had to like all the parents either had to provide like room and board or they had to they had to pay like that was like a form of like tuition or they had to like uh provide somehow for this education for their children to even be educated i mean everything was just the the bedrock of the economy in the south was just manual labor through the use of enslaved people. Like, that was yeah. just it. There was no, you yeah. didn't even go to, there's no university or anything. Well, and the thing is, too, is like, it's, it's not like this only happened back then where history was kind of rewritten. This happened throughout the generations, Correct. which is why different generations have different views on things, is because if you even look at the textbooks from those generations, they're very different from ours because they get updated or they get changed or whatever as years go by so you know things that your your grandparents or your parents learned are very different from what you learned and it's very different from what people are learning right now yeah. um and there's a reason why that you know you didn't learn so much about the trail of tears really you learned about it but it was a very sanitized version or the first thanksgiving yeah there's yeah. a reason why you know you heard about pearl harbor but you didn't hear about tulsa like there's a reason and spoiler alert it's not because they were two very different acts they just affected two very different groups of people and i think that the more you dive into history the more you kind of realize that if it affects the quote-unquote culture, we have to wipe it out. Because America is such a young country that you need a hero. They always need a hero. Or we always need a hero, I should say. You look back when it was the Native Americans and the Cowboys. The Cowboys were always the heroes. You fast forward to when we get through all the wars. The boys were always the heroes because, you know... The boys are at war. We got to sell all this and buy bail bonds or buy war bonds and women. Are going to <laughs> yeah, <laughs> buy those too. I don't know if that helped back then. Um, but then you fast forward, and then like you start getting all these like police shows. So the police became the heroes. Yeah. And like you always had a hero, but when you build that narrative, somebody always has to be the villain. It's just how it goes. Because who's the hero fighting? And. The villain has always been the marginalized group that you want to believe are the bad guys. Again, the Native Americans really weren't the bad guys. But yeah. who do we always learn about that, you know, the soldiers back then had to protect the colonies from these savages. And that's why they were there was because they had to protect the people. No, that's essentially you came into my house and was pissed off that I was doing something. That's basically what it was. Yeah. And I think that's the, the key is that America needs to really let go of that hero mentality. It's okay if we don't have a hero to rally around.
It's fine. Like, I don't know if it's people. okay right now. <laughs> there I is mean, no hero to rally around. <laughs> right. They, they need something. Yeah, it, we need it, a hero. <laughs> yeah, it's looking real bleak. Um, yeah, and, and to, to your point, whenever you're talking about the age of the country, I think that it's uncomfortable uncomfortable for people to think about. Like, it is not that long ago that all of these things that you mentioned occurred. Mm -hmm. It's not that long ago where the first settlers arrived here, uh, to the first Europeans arrived here to this new land and wiped out at that time almost 90% of the native population that they encountered with disease, mm -hmm. fought them, viewed them as savages, unworthy of being on the land that they claimed as theirs. That's not that, that long ago. It's not that long ago that we had black people in chains working for free, being viewed as property. Mm -hmm. Slavery has been more in American history than it has been not in American history. Yeah. It hasn't been that long since we put Japanese Americans in concentration camps in response to Pearl Harbor. It hasn't been that long. Yep. None of this has, and I think that's hard for people. It's hard for people to, um, it, it's, I should say this, it's very easy, I think, for, um, uh, white men, white straight men in this country to feel attacked. I see that. Yeah. I see that. What would you, Hell, I wouldn't know what to think or what to say. I, 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 I understand that. I, I, I understand it. What I think that this country needs is like, so, like in the way that Donald Trump like motivates people to not wear a mask, I think if he spent that time motivating people to like look within themselves and see what we can do to help solve mm -hmm. some of these problems, I think we'd be a lot better off. I think I think that, that it has to come from leadership in our country. And sure. it, it has to come from the top down and it just hasn't ever. Democrat Republic it doesn't matter. It just hasn't yeah. ever. Yeah. You had you somebody's, had somebody Right. I would say somebody's policy always screwed over somebody else. Correct. Yeah. And it always will. Yeah. It always will. You, you have... I've never lived in a more polarizing time than I do now. And I'm very curious, as we're talking about this, what the history books will say. What are they going to say about the COVID-19 epidemic? What are they going to say about... You know, I haven't been in school for... Again, I'm showing, this shows my age. I had never been in school in 9-11 be like in a history book. So what, what do they say? I mean, if going by what we saw in history books is anything, it's a, it's a shred of what actually happened. Correct. It's not the full story. Because truthfully, on some of those events, we don't even know the full story. Correct. We really don't. People are still peeling back the curtain on that, and you're still finding more things. So I don't know. I mean, even JFK's assassination is still something that people are still pulling back the curtain. I feel like there's another series or documentary every year on like mm -hmm. History Channel of like new forensic evidence tells us that. And I'm like, damn, <laughs> how much forensic evidence was there? <laughs> like, Let the dude rest. <laughs> yeah, like, all right, I get it. But I mean, I, like, I, like you said, I think there's, there's always going to be a narrative change always mm -hmm. and i mean even with presidents that we learned about there yeah. was a narrative shift because they had to show that although the president may have did something bad he was still the president so you had to respect that title so we have to paint him in this light i mean hell even learning about nixon you didn't dive that deep into watergate they told you like like, basically, they were like, Watergate happened. Here's a brief, like, high-level thing of what it was. 
president made some mistakes, he resigned, and then we move forward, and then everything got great again. And you're like, wait, what, what, what happened, though? I know the high level, but what happened? I mean, hell, Christopher Columbus was even way more sanitized to the point where we have a holiday for this man. Right. <laughs> like, and he was said to have discovered here, and he didn't. That's even right? sicker, too. <laughs> like, <laughs> like uh, uh, Cuba, um, mm-hmm. the, uh, some other islands down there. Like, he was there. Yeah. Hell, there. I mean, there were already people living here. So if he didn't, he, even if he would have came up here, he didn't discover shit because there are already people here. You can't discover something that's already been found. Right. But he wasn't even the first European to to, to do it. Even if people want to claim that he came in, in, in the United States or what is now the United States or North America, like he he didn't, and he wasn't no. even the first European. Over four hundred years prior to him, Leif Erikson was already over here. Yeah, there's there's, there's, there's evidence of that. Yeah, there's evidence of it. Yeah. So I, I don't know if they're just like this is this is like I don't know if it's because of the uh, of just like the time that it happened, it went to him. Like, wow, this is a, this is a cute uh, cute little character that we can all rally behind, and he has changed exploration um, mm-hmm. in, in a lot of ways. So let's all jump on this bandwagon, and uh, this will be the story that is told. Yeah. And back in the day, back in the day, there was no, I mean, way, way back in the day, I'm talking like circa like 18, early 1800s, mm-hmm. like schools, they weren't teaching like history because that was the history. I mean, that was, the country was so young, um, yeah. but they were teaching more like morals and, and being a good Christian and being a good family person. Like it wasn't, it wasn't what it is now. There was no, like the, there was no set there was no federal standards on education at the time. Mm-hmm. But I mean, even that, like, you look at how that even morphed into mm-hmm. the separation of church and state, but you look at how it morphed from, you know, people complaining about, well, like, well, you can't say God in school anymore. I mean, you can, but they ask you not to make a big, you know, profound thing, which that that's neither here nor there to me to me i'm not a big fan of it like if you want to say it go ahead and say it i said it in school so um, you're not a big fan of not saying it or you're not a big fan of saying it i'm not a big fan of like telling a kid he can't do it right like i'm also not a big fan of forcing people to do it correct yeah, but I like, feel like that's uncomfortable yeah but i'm not a big fan of like you telling the kid like well you can't do that like mm-hmm. it, it might make someone so uncomfortable like that i'm not a big fan of um but that's a different topic but like when you look at all of that, even that morphed into now you're changing a book that's thousands of years old to fit the narrative of the American nationalist. So even that's morphing into now everyone's a theologian and they're trying to say like, well, what it really meant was, no, that's not what it meant. That's what you want it to mean because you want to imagine Jesus as this American flag waving, gun toting, right. like living skin and loving. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's not how it was. And I think that's a big hurdle for people too, is that you combine this twisted history that you had, along with this twisted doctrine that you're getting forced by quote unquote reverends, or by even some politicians who try to twist it, and now everything is twisted for you. Nothing is as it seems. It's like we're living in like one big giant Truman show here mm-hmm. where we don't know. If you ask people who are international, I have friends who are international. And if you ask them what America looks like, it's a completely different narrative. And then you find yourself trying to defend a country that you thought you knew and you sound like an idiot. And then you're like, well, hell, how do I back out of this one? Right. Like it opens your eyes. And I think that there's a reason why people who live on the coasts are typically more open-minded about a lot of different, like, diversity and all that. There's a reason for it. It's because that's where pretty much everyone settled. Everyone who immigrated settled on a coastal city, pretty much. No one really immigrated and settled all the way in, like, Montana. Like, you, you pretty much set up shop wherever you came in. And I think that's why growing up in like coastal cities or things, your so your experience is so much more. I mean, hell, people, there are people right now. Maybe some of you who are listening, 
that don't even know that if you're Puerto Rican and you're born on the island and you're born in the States, you're still a citizen. There are some who might not know that. But the history books will tell you that, but no one covers that. No one covers that the American government used part of the island as its own bombing place. They use it as a testing facility for bombs. They use, hell, they use the people for test. Yeah. They use birth control as a test down there and try to sterilize the women. And again, not knowing that history, fast forward to today, what's the latest claims that are coming out that people are doing? Yeah, to, forced, hysterect forced hysterectomies to, again, that they're another, investigating right now. Yeah. yeah, to another Hispanic group because yeah. you didn't learn about the first one that happened. Because you were blind back then. And now, history is going to be blind to this too. Is there an argument to be made that, like, do I need to learn not to torture and enslave people to not do it? Clearly is you there do. An argument, <laughs> is there an argument to be made for that? Because that's, that's what I don't understand, is that there is this, this, um, I don't know, this just, this godlike mentality of, and again, it's because it's indoctrinated into you at such a young age here mm -hmm. that that because you're an American, I mean, this is the, this the, and I this is by, and by no means my attempt at like being like you should not be proud to be an American. Correct. By no means saying that, but w w what I don't understand is how somebody can can, can basically say like oh like they, they do no wrong. Right. That's not true, right? Like, and it's very evident that it's not true. So I, I, I just, I have a hard time thinking like, wow, like you have to be told not to enslave people. You have to be told not to force people to have hysterectomies and do mm -hmm. sick tests on them. Like, yeah. what? That's that's the thing. In no way, shape, or form, am I saying or are you saying like we don't like being American? Correct. No way, shape, or form. But if you truly love something, then you need to know that when it's not right, it needs to change. Yeah, because and you should want to fix it. Correct. But the pro but the problem <laughs> is the problem is right now something there's a lot wrong, but there's a lot right for certain groups of individuals, and they don't want it yes. to stop being right for them. Right, but also for some groups of individuals, it's your first taste at. The world's not going the way you want it, and you don't know how to deal with it. Wearing a mask was the first taste for a lot of people that the world doesn't go the way you want it to sometimes. And how'd they deal with it? They threw a fit. You even refused have used to wear it. <laughs> you even have high level <clears throat> excuse me. You even have high level government officials comparing wearing your masks to slavery. Like a mask yeah. mandate to slavery. How, yeah. to how tone deaf is that? How dramatic is that? To again, you've never been told no, or the world's never gone the way you wanted to go like this before. So now you have no idea how to handle right. it. Meanwhile, other groups are like, welcome to the show. This is a Tuesday. Yeah. Like every group has something that they've deal with on a daily basis not all minorities deal with the same thing all the time yeah. i'm not, i know that but it's like i think that's a big thing for america is that you know if you were born and raised in america and like we are but you don't have a like a strong hold on what your heritage is not your nationality like where, like deep down, mm -hmm. in your bones, what you are, I think that twists what you learn in history because you don't want to hear the bad. Right. So, like for instance, I'm very much American, USA, born and raised. However, I've always had a strong hold on where my family's from, where my ancestors are from. That's always been a bigger part of my identity mm -hmm. than. American history right. because that's where my roots are and I think that when people started dropping those and you even ask some people like what's your nationality and they're like I'm American no you're not go do a 23andMe test come back and tell me what it told you because when you learn about that 
I think people start to open their eyes to the atrocities that have been committed here because you realize it's okay to criticize it because you want it to be better for everyone else. But you hold on to it and want it to be so pure because that's all you have. It's all you know. Mm -hmm. You don't know about your great-grandparents in Germany who did this or your great-grandparents in Ireland who did this. You don't know that. All you know is I'm an American, and I have to make sure America's first, America does it best, America does it better. Like, they're the Bret Hart's of every other country. Like, the best there is, the best there was, or the best there ever will be. Like, and they're not. Not always. A lot of the time, yes, America was top dog in a lot of things. But case, in point, case in point, not pandemic. Case in yes. point. Case in point. Yes. Case in point, not pandemic. Case in point, where we rank in science and math. Case in point, where we rank in most major categories. Yeah, mass in, in <laughs> incarcerations, uh, to fee, even for a developed country. Um, I mean, all the, the the systematic inequalities we have with wealth, the... Even childbirth. All these, yeah. <laughs> it's rough. Yeah. And... I think that there there is currently a shift happening in this country um, through our generation and those young mm -hmm. uh, under us. Um, yeah. I don't know what happened because I mean we weren't spoon fed the same things that the generation before us was, but similar. I mean mm -hmm. nothing nothing that I uh, recall was super different, but it was like we became of their age now, and we're like, what the hell? Well. I think what the difference was for us and for the generation after, like after us, was one the internet. Yeah, we had the technology. generation after us. We could find the but lines. Two, <laughs> yeah, but two the TV shows we had. I mean, you had back in the day, you had TV shows that you were kind of like, Ooh, like they just played into the stereotype. But why did they bring out the new TV show? Why did why did that change? I think those TV like so. For, okay, let's fast forward this way. Somebody watched. I don't know, the Jeffersons. All, all the family. Oh, okay. Yeah, or, yeah, all in the family. It was spun into the Jeffersons. Um, and they saw someone on TV that looked like them. Mm -hmm. And they decided, I'm going to write stories that will help reflect me so another kid feels like how I felt when I saw that. Mm -hmm. And then you have another show that comes out. And then another, like for me, it was Chico and the Man with Freddie Prince. That was a big show, and I used to watch the reruns, and I was like, oh my gosh, like, Freddie Prince looks like me, even looks like me. Like, we are both very light-skinned Puerto Rican people, and I was like, finally, I don't have to feel like <laughs> an outcast in my own people. And then you fast forward, and you get more shows that come out like that. I mean, hell, the George Lopez show even, not mm -hmm. Puerto Rican, but the George Lopez show ran for so long. And I remember thinking, like, damn, like, he's another Spanish dude, and people love him. Like, he's a household name. So I think for our generation, it was seeing people like that that inspired you to get into things, to write yeah. those stories, to do those things that we all kind of looked into the history and we taught each other. It became like, quote unquote, tribal knowledge. Like there's a reason why I know some of the things I know about Puerto Rico, but not a lot of people know that. There's a reason why a lot of minorities and a lot of African-Americans already knew about Tulsa, but a lot of people didn't. It's because like these atrocities became tribal knowledge to us. Right. Because it impacted us so deeply that we had to teach our kids this because you have to see what the world is like. I won't let you see that everything's, you know, rainbows and butterflies. Like, you have to see that your fellow man and your country is capable of these things. And, and, and I there think... Need, go ahead. I was going to say, I think that's what was the shift was. And there needs to be an opportunity for children that don't like for white young white children to know about Tulsa. There needs to be an opportunity. All these things need to be taught in schools, and they're not. Even worse, I I school choice or uh, what is that? Yeah, school choice is to me like a, just akin to segregating schools again. Mm -hmm. and, and redlining, like we, we deal with these issues even still now. Schools are still segregated now. You cannot convince me otherwise. Like mm -hmm. still now. It's just the same thing. And, and that's what, see, this is what's funny. Whenever people try to tell me like, well, I didn't do this. 
or I didn't do it, or my parents didn't do it. Like, mm-hmm. it was, like, three three generations ago. Three generations. Similar, like, you, your parents, and your parents' parents, and your parents' parents' parents, like, similar to the, all of the knowledge that you have, and, and the culture that you have inside mm-hmm. of you, was instilled of you, the same thing for those kids. One, mm-hmm. The only difference is, one's kind of ugly. Because, yeah. like... You cannot convince me that upon, uh, upon the, um, upon the how long of slavery in this country, you cannot convince me that all of a sudden people like it was like, we're all equal, son of a bitch. Yeah, who knew? We're all equal. <laughs> who knew? Yeah. You can't, because it's not true. Wait. You have the same people thinking in their minds. No, like I don't care what the law says. I'm. Yes, I'm going to have to follow it or whatever. They still didn't follow it. But for the sake of this argument, yes, I'm going to have to follow it. But I still don't think they're equal. Son, these people are not equal. They're not. Mm -hmm. They're not. Now that it became – then the next generation, the next generation. And then it became socially unacceptable because of – because there's just physically more people here in this country, more minorities in this country. It's becoming socially unacceptable for you to say that out loud. So, like – well, honey, if you see a person that looks like this, just make sure you hold your purse really tight. Make sure you cross the street. Be- then, mm-hmm. then, it, then it started changing the, the dialogue. Still, still the same message that we had back in the 1800s whenever we were like, this is still not a person. It's just articulated yeah. differently. It's, it, it, it had adapted to the times. Yeah. Because you couldn't be as out with it. Correct. So you had to kind of find a way to be creative in it and like you said whether that meant you know locking your doors when people walk by or you know kind of crossing the street or hell even if you hear somebody speaking another language throw a fit Mm -hmm. and remind them where they are like that that's going to change all of a sudden like oh i now know english because you just told me thank you (laughs) like i think all of that happened because like you said people just adapted to it and it's really like it's hard to argue against it because when you really look at it again even today people are still arguing and what's the first thing that comes out of their mouth this is my heritage so you are saying that all this ugliness and everything you disown it but you don't want to throw it away because it happened and it's my heritage this is the conversation with the, with the statues <laughs> That was a conversation yeah. with a lot of the statues of the Confederate Correct. Confederate soldiers. Correct. And that tells me that you don't even know enough about your fake heritage to know why it's not okay. Yeah. Like, it's not and it's not any one particular person's fault that you think that like your your heritage your ancestry started in what is now Boston, Massachusetts, but really you're right. like Scottish and your people yeah. originally spoke Gaelic. Like, and you, there's this whole other language that you don't even know. And that was yeah. your language. Like there's, that's not their fault. However, I think similar to what you said, that's whenever they, this is all I have. This is all I have. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to be damned if it looks a mess, even if it is a mess, I'm going to be damned if it's a mess. Yeah. So we're going to keep, we're gonna keep the we're gonna keep these statues like these these are our these are our people these are what I, I'm not like worldly I haven't traveled um, mm-hmm. outside of this country but I don't see too many other or hear of too many other countries that celebrate so many people that committed so many atrocities um, by putting statues and naming military bases after them. Correct. That were tra- traitors of that own country, and then they're like, you know, what would be, you know, it'd be great if we named this military harbor after them. <laughs> yeah, like no. you know what we should do? We should name our bases after people who killed American soldiers. That's what they did. Yeah, <laughs> they were traitors. Yeah, like, and you still thought it was okay to be like, you know what? Let's throw their name on there. Let's give them yeah. the common decency of putting their name on there. For what? Yeah. <laughs> 
That would be like me like literally turning on the news and hearing like a German newscaster being like, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here aboard the USS Hitler and like it, it would literally be akin to German people doing that. Like why? Yeah. They wouldn't. They, they strongly do not. <laughs> yeah. Like that's an ugly part in Germany's history. They're very much aware of it. And they are very much, again, the opposite. They've built museums to show you the Correct. atrocities that happened because that's what educates you is the museum, not where you have your sandwich at three o'clock before you call your wife on your lunch break, staring at it with some pigeons resting on a statue. You learn nothing from there. Yeah. But these it, museums is where you go. Then you can do that. Do a whole Confederate museum. I don't give a damn. Yes. Because everyone will have that in your face. The that atrocities tells the truth. in your that face. That tells the truth. Yeah, not them, like, <laughs> holding over, like, some alternate universe. <laughs> Correct, yeah. Like, they tried to save the fabric of this country, and yeah. uh, and I'll be damned, but this is why we're in turmoil now. Yeah. Um, but that's what needs to happen, and unfortunately, it's usually these, it's usually minorities in whichever uh, atrocity they were affected by that institute these. I mean, you have people that have to, like, take it upon themselves to turn... I like Tyler Perry bought, like, a huge plantation and turned it into his studio lot, naming it after uh, very influential um, African Americans throughout history. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. But you don't... Like, there, there is an uncomfortability in people to address what is happening slash happened in this country. And it's just going to, all of this is just going to continue. Again, we're a very young nation. I, 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 nations over the, the course of their lifetime have multiple civil wars. They have multiple, I mean, that, I, I don't know if it's going to happen. Um, mm -hmm. it, tune in the night after the election. We may be covering the first one. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but seriously. Yeah, it's just. What are they going to say about that? I'm wondering what, yeah. the, what that what what that going to be like in the books. Hell, yeah. That's that's why I'm, I again to to put it in terms that it's more palatable for the rest of the world. Imagine you watch Winter Soldier and you were cheering for Hydra after you found out they infiltrated Shield, because that's basically what happened. Was these people infiltrated things that they knew was going to give them positions of power? And they ran their agenda that way. And it marginalized people for generations. Yeah. So imagine you just found that out. Hydra's still doing it. And you're like, you know what? Hydra's not that bad, actually. Yeah. My life is pretty good by Hydra. It's basically what happened. Just to put in a more sanitized version, because people love sanitized versions. That's what happened. Are you still going to cheer for Hydra? <laughs> yeah. And, and I think that, like, th this is... I, I do think that the media is to blame for a lot of things. I do. Not I, everything, I, but a lot. Yeah. Not everything. A yeah. lot of things. I think the manner in which it's covered um, in the news is yeah. oftentimes, I'll even say oftentimes, inappropriate um, yeah. or completely divisive. false. Yeah, it's very divisive, too. Yeah. And... I think that also turns like it makes people not want to be involved, it, and it furthers you know the president's narrative and, and being like fake news this is why you can't trust them. This is why you can't. This is this is why. Again, I and I am not making this comparison for shock value, but the only other time I had heard in my lifetime, or not in my lifetime, but in my lifetime that I learned it, like. The only other time in history that I heard of, of like a ruler of a group of people like attacking the press and wanting to control the narrative in this manner was in Germany. Mm -hmm. In the late Which 1930s. Which we learned in U.S. history. And yet right. somehow it didn't take and you still and don't see the writing right on the wall. Now. Yeah. Correct. So what do the history books say about this? Right. That's what I want to see. I want to yeah. see what my kids' history books say about these last four years. Yeah. And again, Are we going to say that we had, we had all these issues going on in this country and underneath all of it, we had people that were regardless, 
regardless of the reason on why they were in these cages, in cages being operated on mm -hmm. against their will. Again, very reminiscent of a previous time that we learned about in U.S. history, and yet here we are. Mm -hmm. Justifying it. Well, it's different this time. Right. Well, they it's shouldn't always going to be different. They shouldn't have crossed. This is what makes it different. Mm -hmm. It's they always going to be different. What they did was illegal, so that's why they're... I mean, they're prisoners. This is what happens to prisoners, so... Yeah, because it's our heritage. We can't, we can't do that. No, you, you came in on... Don't tread on me. <laughs> that's what everyone is basically like and again how long are you going to sit back and hear about these things and say oh my gosh that was terrible but it would never happen today and then when it happens today oh my gosh that was terrible but you know i mean they were illegal yeah until you know, it affects they didn't them. comply until it affects them directly yeah and until it affects them directly there's just not another there's not another time I don't know how people can be surprised in the, as of this recording, in the past 48 hours of there not being any, like, murder charges in, uh, for the officers in Breonna Taylor's case. Like, I don't know how people are surprised. I'm not surprised. Why are people, I honestly don't, th this is the reality in this country, is that, like, what I find ironic is that people blame the media like, well, it's an election year. So they posted, you know, they had to cover uh, George Floyd mm -hmm. and like th they just had to cover this like just right now. Think about what is it being covered. George Floyd is not an anomaly. Right. Like there, there, there are dozens of, of victims of police brutality every single day in this country. Yeah. And, and that are disproportionately racial minorities. Because mm -hmm. I hear this too. We don't ever see the cops, you don't ever see the cops, uh, or you don't see videos of the cops uh, abusing white people when it happens. But why are you okay with that either? <laughs> like, I don't, know. I don't, I don't understand. Know. Like, okay, yeah, it happens. But why are you okay with that? Like, why are you like, yeah, it happens, but you know what? It's a tough world out there. What? Yeah. What the hell is you wrong should, with you? You should have listened. Yeah, like, what the hell is wrong yeah. with you? And yeah. now you see people, again, in the past 48 hours, well, I mean, we got the facts now. Now we know what actually happened, okay? Then the media, they spun the narrative at first to make it seem like, no, that's what happened. Now you know what happened? People collaborated their stories to say, hey, if I say this, you're going to say this? We cool? Good. Right. Because why the fuck would a story change after this long? Like, come on now. Don't, again, don't sanitize what happened so it can make it palatable for you. Because, again, it doesn't mean you hate your country. It means you want it to get better. Correct. But You're enabling here's the thing. Here's the, thing. <laughs> the uncomfortable truth. The uncomfortable truth is that there is a large, a large amount of people in this country who do not want it to be better. They don't. They do not want it to be better. So then why change it? Why educate yourself? Why investigate it? You know? If we can work if we can work together to ensure that our that our people are the most dominant people in this society while I'm still on the face of this earth, by God, that's what we're gonna do. That's what people are uncomfortable about. Is that there's more people being called to the carpet for it. And, 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 and people, minorities and, and, and victims of these atrocities, they're, it's enough. They're done. Mm -hmm. They're tired. And then they're like, well, why are you looting? Why are you, why are you running through the streets? Why are you setting stuff on fire? Why are you kneeling? So you didn't like the kneeling. You don't like the protesting. You didn't like her on that damn bus. You didn't like him marching on Washington. You, because they just want him to sit down and shut the fuck up. That's that's and true. Again, U.S. history. Why didn't we learn that Correct. there was a civil court case about that assassination? Why didn't we really even learn about Emmett Till in U.S. history? You didn't really. We didn't really learn about Emmett Till. I did, <laughs> but I I can't remember if it was in AP U.S. history or regular. So that's why I paused. I was in regular, and I will tell you what. 
I don't remember it. Uh, I don't remember. Um, jarring. If we did, jarring. Absolutely yeah, jarring. Yeah. If we did, it was like a, a sliver of what happened, and then we just fast forwarded. Yeah. I think it was AP because, US history. And again, why didn't we learn about Megra Evers even? Yeah. Again, we touched on it, but nothing monumental. Why not? Why do I know more about Robert E. Lee <laughs> than I do? Where, where's Evers' statue? Because the, the winners, even if the South didn't win, the winners get to write the books. The people that control the narrative of this country get to control the information that is like falling down. And this is why, this is why it's so important that people vote. This is why it's so important that people like, and, and I am the first one to say that I again, I, I sympathize with all of you out there, out there that are like, I got a piece of shit and a piece of shit, because yeah. I feel it too. I feel it too. I am all- not, yeah, I am not thrilled about what choices I am faced with in the next what forty odd days. I am not excited God. about that. Fifty days, <laughs> yeah, and that's sick. The only the only good thing is that I'm like hell. At least it's gonna be over. Yeah, but I don't know. Yeah, then I can get back, back to just hating my regular life and not <laughs> the <laughs> elevated version of all the the political ads. Yeah, I don't. Oh man, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Anxiety kicked in. <laughs> it's rough, and and. I'm just curious. I'm curious to say to see what it's going to be like in the history books. Hell, mm-hmm. we may do an episode in our 60s and 70s. We'll 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 dust off the old BP and we'll come back <laughs> and we'll <laughs> and we'll do it. We'll do an episode and we're going to and we'll go through the history book. Good old McGraw Hill. We'll have McGraw Hill on our hands and we'll go through mm-hmm. and we'll read about it. This, this is why it's hard to lie now. This is why it's hard for people to lie now because of this, because there's there's two guys. We have internet. No, not <laughs> yeah, two guys in their living rooms. Uh, <laughs> because there's there's technology now. There's yeah. there's other. It's too broad. Everyone has. Everyone can do anything. Yeah, I can get in contact with an actual like doctorate of X, mm-hmm. not. Some guy screaming in his living room. Right. Well, my mom said that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not, not not some that, guy like. Well, my uncle was there, and he told me that. All right. right. Your uncle's a damn liar. So, like now, I can actually talk to somebody who studied that, and right. really find out what happened. And again, it's not a matter of. Well, then you must hate this, or we are a Democrat. I don't give it for either party, folks. There's a spoiler alert for you. I don't care. I know people who are Democrat. I know people who are Republican. I love people who are Republican. I love people who are Democrat. I hate people who are both. What I'm telling you is the party line doesn't matter. What matters is if you genuinely care, you want something to get better. You want it to be the best version of itself. You don't want to make excuses for it every time it lashes its ugly head around and beats someone. Correct. You want it to get better. And if you don't want it to get better because your life isn't impacted, there is the problem in and of itself. Because your life isn't the only one that revolves around all of this. There are other people. And again, whether you don't buy into it, whether you don't believe that minorities are marginalized because you've never seen it, or you have a Spanish friend and he told you he's never seen it, I don't give a damn. Because I'm telling you, it happens to minorities all the time. And if you are a minority and you're saying like, well, it never happened to me, you're trying to sit at a table that doesn't want you. That's my real advice right now. Again, if you are a minority, especially Puerto Rican or Hispanic, I'm telling you right now, you are trying to sit at a table that doesn't want you. They only want you when it's Taco Tuesdays. They only want you when it's Cinco de Mayo. They only want you when Coco comes on. They don't want you. Stop sitting at a table you're not invited to. Because your table would love to have you and would love to have you try to help make it better for everyone else's table. 
and it, and it's tough. It's and it's going to continue to be tough. But I think we live honestly in, in a country in which we have amazing opportunity in comparison to most. Yes. Yes. But with that comes a greater obligation to call out things whenever they're wrong. Because we, we can. <laughs> because we can. Yeah. And we must. So we would love to hear from you guys. Love to get your feedback. Um, what you learned in school, in history school, or in history class. Um, you know, and, and what does what does the landscape uh, of this environment look for you? I think it looks different for a lot of people. But being collaborative and communicated uh, to each other can only make this a better a better country for everyone, literally everyone, and not just a select group of people. As always, our uh, social media links are going to be in the description box below. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, um, as you guys do every single week. And if you um, enjoy this, go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. We're going to be having a few different things going on with different videos and stuff. You might notice some uh, other little things we're playing around with. We're still trying to get our feet on the YouTube channel, but we are solid in audio, folks. Solid. Um, <laughs> especially with Pandora on board now. We are solid. Yeah, I was <laughs> waiting for that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we've loved nothing more than Pandora. We've said it multiple times. We uh, <laughs> we enjoy them. Uh, <laughs> Got that email. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but as always, he's been Anthony. I've been Carlos. Remember, the history book on the shelf is just always repeating itself. Until next time.